this report uh, was into the agreement between the Government of Australia and the Government of the United States of America on technology safeguards associated with the United States participation in space launches from Australia. Uh, now, having agreements around technological areas such as space and launches is not unusual. We've done that uh, in the defence sector for many years. Uh, but in order to actually improve the access of our industry to the burgeoning global market in the utilisation of space, uh, this is an important agreement. And the inquiry itself was not controversial. There was broad support uh, from uh, a range of stakeholders into this agreement. And in fact, uh, the commercial opportunities are large. Um, the global space sector. Uh, is expected to rise from US $464 billion in 2022 to $1.1 trillion by 2040. And so there is a large sector there. The US is one of the largest players. So it does make good common sense uh, for Australia to be involved with that and to make sure that the companies who are investing in infrastructure and staff and processes here in Australia uh, from Southern Launch in my home state of South Australia to Equatorial Launch and others across the nation, uh, that they have the ability to tap into that US market as well as uh, markets from Europe and Asia uh, as they are currently doing. As is often the case, though, the inquiries that lead to these reports uncover issues which sometimes don't make it to the report. And that's why these opportunities to outline some of the other considerations are uh, important uh, in this parliament. So three areas that I just wanted to quickly uh, cover off on. One is the strategic alignment of government departments. Uh, so here we have uh, a process initiated by the Department of, of Industry, who oversee the Australian Space Agency, around this TSA so that we can uh, have our space sector operate launches. But what was not happening was getting the agreement of the Department of Climate Change and Environment and Energy to actually progress the environmental approvals for companies who are setting up launch sites, in some cases waiting years and having to turn customers away because they weren't getting the approvals through the system. And the evidence that came out very clearly during the inquiry was that for the Australian government if we are seeing this as a priority, then we need to actually get each of the departments who provide an enabler to the outcome we're seeking to do their part in having an equal priority uh, on some of these outcomes. Otherwise, you'll get one piece in place, but then the other approvals don't come through, and to some extent, it's almost been a wasted effort. So that alignment is important. Another piece of evidence that came through uh, fairly strongly from witnesses was the strong support for the Australian Space Agency, uh, led by Enrico Palmero, and the good job he and his staff are doing. Uh, and that was a legacy of the former coalition government, uh, the establishment of that agency. But the discussion also highlighted that we could probably see improved efficiencies uh, if that agency was actually an independent statutory body as opposed to something sitting under the Department of Industry. And that is something I believe that the Australian government should look at uh, in terms of how we actually optimise the ability of that agency to be our interlocutor with international partners as well as being the regulator here in Australia for activities such as space launch. The last part, though, that I'd like to talk to is the importance of a whole of government investment in this industry sector, uh, because space launch is but one part uh, of the sector. But there was a fair bit of discussion during the inquiry about the missed opportunity uh, that when Minister Husik cancelled the National Space Mission for Earth Observation, the disappointment across Australia's space sector about the undoing of the investment that had given our sector a clear strategic path forward to developing true sovereign capability. Because what that program did, and this is a program that was announced in the 2022-23 budget, uh, some billions of dollars over the decade, but 
uh, 38.5 million per annum in the first phase for the National Space Mission for Earth Observation, which was to design and build and launch four satellites here in Australia. Now, many people would ask, why would we do that? Well, Earth observation is important in terms of geosciences, everything from forecasting the weather to responding to natural disasters, the topic of the discussion that's just occurred with the previous report, as well as managing the environment supporting our farmers. Uh, the ability to launch satellites is also important for things like global positioning system, and there are so many, so many systems in our nation from the distribution of goods, whether it be pharmaceutical, medical goods, you know, taxis, you name it, people use GPS all the time. And if there's one thing we know, that in a conflict, as we've seen in Ukraine, the overhead assets uh, are one of the first things that will actually be uh, targeted by adversaries in a campaign. And so we would expect that were there to be a serious conflict in the Indo-Pacific, that uh, the satellites that provide communications, our observation over areas of interest, as well as that uh, time-space information through GPS uh, would be disabled. And so the ability to have an industry sector that is actually capable not just of providing a widget for someone else's program, but to do all the joined-up elements of designing the payload, the satellite bus, the launch vehicle, the launch site and the control sector was going to be enabled by the National Space Mission for Earth Observation, genuinely a dual-use purpose. And so as we look uh, to the Defence Strategic Update of 2020 and the Defence Strategic Review of 2023, which highlights that Australia no longer has a 10-year warning time before the potential for major conflict in our region, where we would lose those overhead assets, even those that weren't damaged or destroyed, would be most likely tasked, retasked and redeployed by the nations that own them, the Australian public would expect the Australian government to work with our industry to launch our own communications, ISR and GPS uh, satellites. But if we haven't actually invested in the sector to do that, then we don't have that joined up industry from the launch sites to the satellite bus uh, producers, to the control sectors uh, to enable it. And so the National Space Mission for Earth Observation uh, was actually contributing some 65.7 million to set the conditions for rocket launch, 12 million uh, ongoing for, to remove the cost recovery launches to make it more viable for industry. Uh, some 9.5 million to develop a space strategic update to actually align our space efforts across the nation, which would make this a really viable sector. And that was going to take our funding to over $2 billion. So it is one more area where the Albanese government has actually undermined the resilience of Australian industry and the resilience of our defence capability by cutting that funding. And I certainly call for the restoration of that funding so that things like this new agreement around space launch with the United States will be complemented by a resilient and capable Australian industry that can support us both in peace, in deterring conflict and, worst case, in winning a conflict.